Whenever a new year rolls around, I think a lot of people take a look at what's happened in the previous year, and then they set themselves some targets for the next one. As someone who produces a video maybe five or six times a week, and then uploads it to YouTube, it's important for me to keep content fresh for everyone out there, you guys who wants to watch it. And so today sees the return of my best weapon series that I last ran during the Battlefield 4 days, nearly three years ago now. I'm going to start off this episode by choosing what I think is the best infantry rifle, but at the end, there will be a poll for you guys to vote on which is the best weapon in another category, be it LMGs, SMGs, shotguns, whatever. At the end of each of these episodes, you guys will get to vote and shape what the next episode will be about. I want you guys to be more involved with the channel this year, and I think this series is a great way to start that off. So then, to the infantry rifles. There are plenty of them to choose from in Battlefield 1, after three expansions worth of weapons have been added on top of the base game weapons, and I think that's made it a little bit harder to pick, which I think is the best. Now I'm going to highlight the top three in this video, and that will be the format for all of these other videos moving forwards for the best LMG, best SMG, whatever. I think that way then I can kind of give you an overall view of some of the best ones you can choose, and then pick a number one as well. And coming in at number three is the Martini Henry. Now, it was a close run thing between this and the newer Vetali Vitali rifle that was added with the Russian DLC, but the Martini for me wins out for a few different reasons. First of all, the damage model is slightly more advantageous. The Martini can do a max damage of 112 between 30 and 70 meters, and that means almost certain death to anyone you hit with a bullet. Now, between 70 and 80 meters, that damage drops from 112 down to 100. Now, this above 100 range in the middle there is to compensate for slightly different damage multipliers applied to different areas of the body. You have a different one for the torso, the head, the legs and the arms, and so on. In certain areas, that multiplier is less than one, meaning the damage value actually drops from what I've just told you. With any of the weapons in Battlefield 1, you might hit a target side on, and you might hit a different part of the body from what you thought you hit. It's very difficult to be precise with iron sights on an infantry rifle as well, so sometimes those side on shots, you end up hitting the upper arm. Now, because the Martini can only fire one round before it has to reload, in a previous patch, DICE decided to adjust the bullet damage of this rifle to make sure each round that landed was much more consistent in its damage. You have to remember all of the other rifles that you can choose have more than one round before you can reload, so it's much easier for them to come along with a follow-up shot. Not so easy with the Martini. When we look into some of the other statistics of the Martini, it doesn't make it look all that good. Bullet velocity is just 400 meters a second, and that means at longer ranges, you will really need to lead your target. But you have to remember, this is just one of two lever action rifles in the game, and the Martini is the only breech loader as well. Not to mention that the rifle is considered fairly outdated, standing next to its bolt-action magazine-fed brothers. The reason this is still a great rifle though, and deserving of that number 3 spot I think, is purely its damage sweet spot. 30 to 70 meters. Battlefield 1's overall engagement ranges in comparison to previous titles like Battlefield 4 is somewhat reduced, with much more of the action happening across shorter distances. So having a rifle that can land 112 maximum damage anywhere between 30 and 70 meters makes it ideal for an infantry rifleman looking to drop players in just one shot. Now, the constant reloading might be a little bit off-putting, but it represents a more skilled weapon overall to me. Taking on a rifle that is clearly lagging behind others in terms of features, but possessing more raw power than any other rifle in the game, means skilled players will likely find using the Martini 
quite enjoyable. You just have to be very good at aiming and being precise at landing different shots on different areas of the body. And of course, who doesn't love the sound this thing makes? It sounds like a cannon firing off into the distance. So the Martini Henry takes spot number three, and I'm giving the runners-up position spot number two to the Gewehr M95, the Austro-Hungarian produced standard issue rifle of World War I. Now this weapon possesses some great characteristics that makes it perfect for someone who's looking to get stuck into the action as a scout soldier. Rather than playing on the outskirts of the battle and sniping in, this rifle will give you an excuse to get involved in the battle. In Battlefield 1, the Gewehr M95 is a rather unique weapon in the Scout class, just as much as the Martini Henry is, but for completely different reasons. Firstly, this weapon is all about speed. The reload, the rate of fire and the muzzle velocity. The M95 uses an on-block clip system to reload and arm the rifle with rounds. This means both the cartridge and the clip are fed into the rifle through a receiver at the same time, rather than rounds simply being fed in one at a time. So reloading the M95 with rounds still in the magazine means the whole on-block clip ejects out and any unspent rounds still in there come out with it and then a completely new one can be slotted into its place. This means reload times and the ability to fire more rounds at a faster rate is greatly increased over other rifles that you could pick. Three seconds for a reload, that's all it takes, and five rounds going in there every single time you reload could be the difference between life and death in a close quarters scenario. Alongside that, the M95 uses a straight pull bolt action instead of a rotating bolt action found on other rifles. This means rounds can be chambered faster and then fired faster and you don't have to scope out in between bolt animations so you can always keep your sights on that target. In Battlefield 1, you're looking at a theoretical 66 rounds a minute of continuous fire, but of course you will be limited by the need to reload after you've fired all five rounds in that clip. One thing you do need to be aware of with the M95, however, is the damage model, again being very different to other rifles in this game. It uses a system that was employed in Battlefield 4, where the rifle does its greatest damage up close and then gradually falls in damage as distance to the target increases. There is no sweet spot with the Gewehr M95. This is likely a balancing feature, considering how fast the weapon can fire, but nonetheless you'll need to know that the max damage is only 90 to the body. Now a headshot will ensure a one-shot kill, but with iron sights, your chances of landing those at longer ranges is considerably lower. So that's the Martini in spot number 3 and the Gewehr 95 taking spot number 2, leaving obviously the best infantry rifle in Battlefield 1. I think you know what's coming. It's the SMLE, the Lee Enfield Mark III. This rifle is literally the jack of all trades, offering favourable stats in almost any area, meaning it can adapt to almost any situation. And considering enemies can appear from literally anywhere in Battlefield 1, I think it's always best to be equipped with a weapon that can give you a fighting chance wherever you happen to be. Or if you're not sure on the scenario or the map you're going to be playing, then the SMLE for the Scout class is always a good bet. Like the Martini Henry, the SMLE rifle has a good sweet spot which suits Battlefield 1's average engagement ranges almost perfectly. It's 40 to 80 meters. It also has a long tail to its damage sweet spot, only dropping back down to the minimum of 80 damage at about 110 meters or so. So you get an extra 30 meters of heightened damage. Plenty of action will be happening 40 meters or so in front of you, and the SMLE gives you plenty of distance to land those 100 damage shots. Another great feature of the SMLE rifle is its ability to hold more rounds than any other rifle you could choose. Two clips of five rounds can be loaded through the receiver into the internal magazine, and that gives you ten rounds to fire before you need to reload. Now, if you can empty the rifle before reloading, fire all of those ten shots, then you'll get the added benefit of a faster reload. Two clips of five straight through that receiver in the top. If you reload when there are still rounds left, you're likely to see a few rounds loaded one by one. That adds more time where you cannot fire. 
Those 10 rounds means you can afford to miss a few shots and still have plenty in reserve. You might get into a gunfight and you're not quite sure how far somebody is away. You'll fire a couple of shots and miss the player. Maybe the third one hits. You've still got seven rounds left in your rifle. If you add to that a rate of fire of 52 rounds a minute, then you're looking good for popping a few players off before needing to reload anyway. The faster you can fire, the easier it is for you to track your target as they move. And speaking of moving and shooting, the SMLE will help you out there as well. Muzzle velocity is 740 meters a second. That will make sure that you don't have to lead your targets too much at longer ranges. Of course, with an infantry rifle, you're looking at mid to close range anyway. With iron sights, this is actually a really important statistic. Iron sights somewhat restrict your view at range anyway, and there are plenty of other rifle options in Battlefield 1 where you can use an optic for what I call proper sniping. But the SMLE infantry being great at almost everything, there's always an opportunity for you to pull off some great long range kills with this rifle. So there you have it, the best infantry rifle in Battlefield 1 for me is the SMLE Mark III. Now I'm sure many of you aren't totally surprised by that outcome, but hey, I thought I'd start off this best weapon series with the easiest pick of them all and leave the other weapon categories for you guys to vote on. So the next episode, I've decided we'll focus on the SMGs in Battlefield 1, and I've linked a straw poll down below in the description. Go and click on that link and vote for the SMG that you think is best in Battlefield 1, and the next episode will feature the top three picks from that poll. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave your thoughts down below in the comments section as well. I'm sure everybody has their own favorite weapons in Battlefield 1. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.